I know Brazil can be different for everyone, but for you, what is Brazil? Brazil for me is a symbol of resistance and surveillance as a kid, because uh, as many people, I was born and raised in the poor communities. So Brazil teach me how to be strong uh, and presented me some challenges that I thought I could not be capable for doing so. But actually I did, but it's not easy. So for me, nowadays that I live here safely in Germany, Brazil represents a memory that I wanted to let it behind. Of course, so there is some components, some elements that I bring with me in my heart, like my friends, my affections, my beloved ones, and my youngest son, which is still living in Brazil. But uh, from my past as a teenager mother, it was a bit dark, but uh, with some, some good uh, outcomings out, out of this darkness. Uh, Brazil is a very sexualized, country and culture, it's normal. We see people dancing and listening songs with sexual contents, but speaking about this is still a taboo. So no parents will take your hands and explain how the babies are made. They think that uh, this kind of job is for the professor of biology or the science teacher at the school. So there is no information for no one especially if the family is religious. So this was my experience, of course, it can have some exceptions. However, this is the way that I was raised. So no information about pregnancy or birth control or prevention or even the condoms. We could not speak about this at home. I knew through the subjective, but there is the illusion that this would never happen to me one day. This is my, my teenage thought at the time. And I saw many people getting pregnant close to me, but there is no, uh, no belief from my person that this could happen to me actually, and uh, that I would have to deal with this. Because once you get pregnant in a very early age in Brazil, you are considered a social pollution. So you're a bad uh, influence for your youngest friends, for people that are around you somehow. Um, and you were 16 when? 16. Have you seen any other teenagers who got pregnant, maybe among your friends or neighbors or in the community? Yes, especially my cousins. So I come from a family which has, I have a lot of cousins that was living in the street nearby. So one of my cousins, she got pregnant very early and uh, at the school there's always some cases that uh, someone is pregnant in the neighborhood and that later on it become kind of normal and somehow it's a bit expected depending on the woman's behavior because of the teenage pregnancy in brazil is totally female it's not male so if the woman likes to go and do the regular things for a teenage woman like a going party and drink a bit so the neighbors will always pick and say, okay, this one I already knew that she got pregnant before. So the woman get a bad, very fame, but somehow it's, it's already expected. But for men, there is no conversation about this topic. Right. So you're saying you were from a religious family? Yes, not uh, religious, but uh, evan evangelic. Uh, Protestant, I'm sorry. It's mm -hmm. Evangelic is a German word. It's yeah, evangelic. Protestant family. Yeah. Okay. And um, and your mother, um, did you have any conversation about it, about sex or about you know what can happen? Zero conversation. Yeah. So when I was very young, I was going to a school to learn a basic skills on informatics. There I knew the, the father of my son, he was a teacher there. And of course he was not a virgin anymore and I was. And through the time we get close somehow and the sex happened between us and it was unprotected and in my head and my thought it was uh, like this, simple like this. Oh, it was only one time and very bad, why should I be pregnant? So I found out that I was pregnant four months later. And when I 
when I lost the virginity, I took some courage for speaking to my mother because this is a big taboo in Brazil as a Protestant. And if you go to the church, you should get married as a virgin, yeah. like my sister did. So this is a big accomplishment. They totally ignore the biological factor that uh, is a uh, essential component of us as a human being. So I told it to my mother and I think she didn't she just look okay, didn't say too much. So when I found out I was pregnant, it was a shock for everyone. So at the very first stage of the pregnancy, after four months, I was thinking about abortion. But abortion is forbidden in Brazil by law. And the law is based on some Christians' belief that uh, your soul is going to hell if you have an abortion, or the life is given by God and you cannot uh, cancel the process. And this is regardless your mental condition, financial condition, social conditions. The issue is bringing child to this world without any preparation. So in Brazil it's very common to see kids begging at the streets too. Like, this is something very normal to us. It's so normal that uh, at some point we lost the empathy for looking to the child as a human being. This is sad. So I passed through all this. It was a complicated process. But uh, I think uh, I had some help on the way. Like, mm -hmm. I have uh, some friends, some neighbors. When I gave birth, my son was born healthy, was born at the house in a hospital which was about 30 kilometers away from my house. Mm -hmm. But I had the help from my, my brother who was working as a, um, a bouncer at the, the hospital. And moreover, the mother of a friend from childhood, she was a nutritionist at the hospital. She was going there from time to time to visit me. So it was a complicated process, however, always had someone for helping me and uh, by, by any mistake it was not people from family, it was always friends around that gave me some support for uh, make me feel human again. So the teacher at the informatics school, mm -hmm. when that happened, was, uh, was it mutual or do you feel like you were somehow manipulated into? I felt abused. This is a very sensitive topic for me. It's like uh, he was older, he had experience. I was just a, a young girl, 15 years old. And nowadays he doesn't speak to my son. I raised him alone and I did everything alone. So for leaving the country, when we left for the first time, my son was 12 years old, yet I needed his signature. So I have to go against him on court. So for having the right for bring my son to Taiwan, at the very first moment he tried to forbid him because in Brazil you have to pay money for the kids if you're a man. And I was searching for that after 10 years. So if he could not, my mentality was at, the, at that time, if he could not support my son emotionally, he has to do financially. This is the minimum that he can do. So I searched for him and there is no conversation. We don't speak nowadays. I don't know where he lives, what he's doing in his life. Uh, I know the basics, like he had another family, because I was searching for information for leaving the country with my son, and this was all that I know. Um, so did he give permission then for your to leave Brazil? It has to be juridically. He, did, he wanted to block my, my way to Taiwan with my son. He said in the, in the court process that he had some psychological troubles because I forbidden him to see the kid, which is a lie. He tried to because uh, there is money involved. So when there is money involved and people are too greed, they don't care about uh, the main thing, which will be the child. So he didn't care too much. And when I get back to Brazil two years ago and I needed his permission for making a new passport to my son to come here to Germany. He just showed up there, signed the papers without saying a word. And my son met him for the first time and he didn't look it in the eyes of my son. So in Brazil, some people, they are very messed up with the financial stuff and the kids. I'll explain you why. It's like if you have a couple who has some kids and the man normally has to pay some money for the woman, 
which has the, the, the right, the legal right for raising the kids. Uh, when the man do doesn't pay the woman, normally this woman will forbid the, the, the father for missing the, the kids. Child. Yes, the child. So they connect the money with the right for seeing the child. So this is a bit tricky, right? And yes. complicated. Yes. So they don't think about the child first. They think about the behavior. Okay, if you didn't pay the money this month for... It's blackmailing, sort of. If you don't give me money, then you won't see your child. Yes, sort of a thing. yes. Okay. It's a kind of a trading coin. This is absurd, but that happened and a lot. Mm. When you told your mother that, you know, a contact happened with your teacher, um, she for some reason it didn't surprise her she was not she didn't show any emotions and for her it was she was okay with that she didn't show any emotions she didn't i think that normally if i had a daughter if she said okay i had my first sexual contact that happened i would uh, bring her to the doctor at the very first moment if i haven't told about the condoms and things before that was my case so she just showed no emotions. Did she no. ask questions? No. Any? It was like I come to you and say, I'm not a virgin anymore. And you just stay like you are and, and don't have a, any thought. She just, I, I remember that this day she just said something like, oh, I thought that it made, it could happen. It had happened with your ex-boyfriend. I believe that it's the lack of information that she had on, your, on her own. So sometimes she would speak to me like this, okay, if you get pregnant, you have to take your children and uh, go by bus. So going by bus in, in, at the, our hometown city is something horrible. Like you take a, you move from a place to another by bus, it's considered a low social status. I remember she speaking like this, the only thing she spoke. Like, okay, if you get pregnant, many bad things will happen to you. And it was few conversation and out of context, probably because she didn't have this by her own too. So okay. she was a pregnant mother, the first pregnancy, her husband died when she was um, five months pregnant of my sister. So the husband died in a car accident. And then my father that she met and my father was married and she didn't know. This is what she told me. So she started to save many emotions or information for herself. This is what I imagine. I'm not, I cannot say 100% sure, but she just uh, felt, filled her heart with some resentments and fears. So some fears she would pass through my sister and I, and other ones she would kept and just observe. Since she was too busy with her life, she tried to work, to have a social life. She tried to study a bit, she finished her high school only. And I think uh, it was lack of time and intimacy too. It's like uh, the avoidant uh, attachment. When you don't have uh, the capacity to go to your children and speak about your emotions because you should be uh, strong, you should be perfect, uh, you should be an example. However, from the experiences, the children, they don't learn for what you say, but what you do. My mother, she was First time a mother at 19 years old, so also a kind of teenage. Given that your mother is um, religious, when you got pregnant, how did you break it to her? I remember, I don't remember actually how I said this to her. Of course, it uh, should have a big discussion and confusion at home. But I don't remember how it was at the moment because uh, my pregnancy was so full of stress. I have a eclampsia. I tried to get together with the father of my son for uh, making a family, but uh, with uh, 16, 17 years old, it would be a bit difficult to hold the responsibility of a family. So I didn't manage it and the guy didn't manage it neither. But uh, we tried, kind of tried. But um, no. No successful things were reached. Mm. So you said that you got help from, uh, you know, your your friends, your um, brother, and uh, other people, but you're not saying that you got help from your mother. That I can remember. No, she was maybe helping with the basic stuff, with the house, like food, for example. 
this is, was a basic, I think that this she was helping, but uh, when my son was born, I was 17, but uh, in the day, my birthday of 18 years old, I got a job in the other day. So I left the house quite early too. And the friends and the, the community that was living toward me, they are helping not with uh, financial stuff. Like when I arrived from the maternity, I saw the neighbors uh, and my aunt, yeah, the one neighbor and my aunt cleaning the house. So the house could be clean for the baby because it was a very simple house. There is no uh, ready walls like this one behind, it's just the bricks and a simple floor and this can bring a lot of dust. So they cleaned everything and this is the kind of thing that my mother never would do, like cleaning the house for receiving the newborn. And when my son was uh, sick, the neighbors, the one which has a car, I asked for help. He helped me to bring it to the hospital. And if I asked a, a, a can of milk or some diapers to the baby, I could get it from the, the people around, sometimes even closest. I had to be at the hospital after my baby was born. How long were you in the hospital? I think it was almost two and a half, two and a half months, more or less. Yes, a bit wow. Longer, yeah. Because it was before the pregnancy and after the pregnancy. My son, he was born in March and he was supposed to be born in the end of April, in the beginning of May. So mm -hmm. we have to make a cesarean surgery before the day, otherwise he could have some problems and me too. Okay, so uh, they did um, C-section around what months? A week? Seven, seven months ago. Um, what did you feel being pregnant at that age? Uh, frankly saying, I could not enjoy because I was feeling very shy. I feel ashamed for being pregnant. It's like something was done to me and I take the blame, you know, for going outside and uh, for being with friends. So most of the time I was isolated on my own spaceship, on my little ward, doing my stuff. I finished my, I managed to finish the high school. But uh, even going to the school in the very last year, I gave up because uh, my, my feet were too swollen. I was too big because of the eclampsia already, so I was feeling bad. And, but the main component at that time for, for going back to the school was feeling shy. So it was few times that I remember to enjoying actually the pregnancy, the belly. I remember one day before my son was born, I remember the, the doctor come to the room and say, okay, tomorrow we will perform a cesarean section on you. And then there is the, the nurse, she comes with some cups of water. And by accident, she let one felt on the ground. And when she felt on the ground, I felt Davi moving in my belly in a way that she got, he got scared. It was when I have the notion, oh, there is someone here, I have to take care of a child. So this was when some... I have some click inside my brain and I realized that I had to, to take care of the child. And I, became, I think I became a mother in that day, one day before that my son was born. Wow. You're saying you were um, sort of embarrassed to go to school to see... When you, so when um, your friends, schoolmates and, you know, in your neighborhood, people found out that you were pregnant, how was it perceived? Was Did you feel any changes in relationships and communication with others? For sure I did. And for fake, I had to, f I kind of fake in the, the happy family, you know, I, that I was trying to do because since I was pregnant, there is no way out. We have to perform to see the the best that we can get from this, this uh, result of being pregnant. However, I felt many people going away from me. There is some um, parents of my friend that forbidden my friends to, to go along with me because I was a bad influence. So during the pregnancy, I lost many friends. Let's say I lost them because I don't believe we lose friends. I just figure out the one who are the true friends. And the one who, are, who were kept, normally most of them, they were men, male friends. And the people were making fun when we go hang out together, saying that they could be the father. So it's like a teenage uh, stupid joke. 
So yes, few of them they kept, but uh, normally the mother and the parents of my female friends, they will not let them hanging out with me. What were your like plans for the, you know, you were graduating from school, right? You were finishing your school. What, what, what plans did you have? I didn't have the, too many because when you finish, and especially if you're coming from a poor community, you have to work. But uh, my dreams from all the time was seeing the world. I didn't say, okay, now I finished the, the high school and go abroad because I didn't have this possibility financially. But I dreamed to go to the university. But in Brazil, only 11% of the population has access to the education, higher education. Okay. This was, this data is from 2014, 15, that only 11% of the population in agreement with the Brazil census, we have access to the higher education. So I wanted to go to the university and maybe have the possibility to travel the world. But uh, I learned, it, especially from my mother, that the uh, university is something for rich people. Because a public university in Brazil, they are few of them. And the education is a market. Because if you paid for good education during your basic years of school until the high school, Actually, you managed to go to the public university, but if you are studying in the public school that is considered weak, which was my, my case, it's difficult to go to study a course that is considered good. For example, I studied my Bachelor in International Relations, that is considered an elite course in Brazil. First is medicine, second is law, and third is international relations at the time. And I had this dream, international relations, maybe learn about the world, and, do something about it. So I managed to do a government test. I got a scholarship that I had to pay almost nothing for my education in Brazil and I finished in a private university. So a Catholic university, I think uh, it's popular here too. I, I'm not sure, but the Catholic university normally has in many, mm -hmm. many countries. So I managed to finish my bachelor and uh, before I go into the, the bachelor, I had no idea how life would go, how I could uh, develop myself, or how I could uh, have uh, some dreams that actually was reachable. Because everything that was around me or which I dreamed about, the phrase that is echoing in my head until nowadays is, this is for rich people. Or who do you think you are? This is for rich people. That's what I... I learned it. So I had to overcome this kind of thoughts in order to feel myself capable enough for saying, okay, you deserve to go to, to the university. This could, could be considered the basic stuff because uh, in Brazil it's a bit different. Here in Germany, if you don't want to go to the university, you have the technical education, you learn how to cut the hair, how to fix the car. And in Brazil, no. There is no such a thing. You go, you are in the hands of gods, like people say. Yeah.